I think it's a general rule of thumb that the farther south you drive, the better the tacos get. guys so the tacos and tunes vlog is on the road for the next two weeks this weekend we are in san antonio this is where me and kate grew up we left san antonio about eight years ago so there's a lot of new taco joints that have been popping up that everyone is telling me i have to check out i'm gonna go try those today but first to even get the day started we had to come to one of our favorites and this is what san antonio does better than any city in the country i'm convinced it's these little hole in the wall mom and pop you would never think to stop their taco joints that make the absolute best tacos. Pro tip, if you want to know if you had a really good taco joint, how much of a fight did they put up when you asked for extra salsa? The more they fight, the better the tacos are about to be. We are done. This was literally just like a taco flyby. In Dallas, our days don't start until we get coffee. In San Antonio, your day doesn't start until you've had at least one quick breakfast taco before you go get lunch or whatever the heck you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. before you go to the gym. Kate's on the way to her gym right now. Uh, and I am on my way to go eat more tacos. So truth is, about eight years ago when me and Kate got married, we left San Antonio because we felt like there just wasn't much going on here. We'd both grown up here our entire lives and it was still hard to get people up and out of the house. We were musicians and there really wasn't the kind of scene we felt like we wanted and so we figured, well, we'll just head to Dallas. Why not? We knew nothing about Dallas. See, when me and Kate left San Antonio for Dallas, it was the right thing to do. It was the right move and we're happy that we did it. We love San Antonio, but Dallas is home now. But the more I started thinking about it, the more I started feeling like, man, if we as creatives always up and leave the communities that we're in when we feel like they aren't offering us enough, what we're really doing at the end of the day is punishing those local communities instead of making them better. Even when we got to Dallas, we realized that that creative community didn't offer certain spaces that we were wanting. When it was time for us to release our record, we realized there was no setting that would allow us to put on the type of show that we wanted to put on, and that's why Tacos and Tunes started. But Kate reminded me as I was talking through this out loud with her that, hey, we didn't set out to start Tacos and Tunes with some big master plan. We've kind of fallen backwards into this incredible community that's taken two years to build that we're super humbled by and we're super grateful for. But it wasn't like we set out with some incredible master plan that we've executed perfectly. And so this was going to be a vlog about starting something where you're at right now. Instead of arrogantly oversimplifying something and just saying start something, what I want to do is give you three incredibly simple things that you can do right now in the community that you're planted in if you feel like you don't have the things that you need to thrive as a creative. And let me be clear, these are three things that don't require any kind of special skill, they don't require money or funding, all they require is the willingness for you to do them. So the first thing that I'll encourage you to do, point number one of three, is support what already exists for two big reasons. First and foremost, frankly, if you're not supporting what already exists and you're complaining about the creative community around you, uh, you're kind of a part of the problem. You can't ask for support if you're not showing support. There is another big reason why this one is so important and I wanna circle back around to it. So I don't care if all there is your town is an open mic at the Kmart down the street or a meetup for artists, painters, or writers every third Tuesday at the Starbucks inside of a Target. Support what already exists.
realized I climbed to the top of this parking garage for a view that doesn't exist. This one's all right though. So the second thing I'm gonna encourage you guys or challenge you guys to do is just to start small. A lot of times when we think about what we're unhappy with with the communities that we're in and we dream about leaving for other places, we have these big grandiose dreams. So we feel like if we're gonna start something where we're at, well, it's gotta be at least, I just got scared of a butterfly, y'all. So we feel like if we're gonna start something where we're at, well, it's gotta be at least as exciting as the things that we would have left for. But nothing great started great. Everything starts with really small steps. Even when we put on our first Tacos and Tunes show, we had no intention of that becoming some local concert series that we would do once a month or even ever again. It was just supposed to be one night. However, the reason we were able to do that one night is because we had been supporting what already existed. When we had the idea for Tacos and Tunes, there were people in my contacts that I could call and say, hey, I have an idea and I need you to host us. Hey, I have an idea and I need you to come. And everybody who came and supported us, it wasn't like we had this incredible grand opening and all these misfits and creatives came out of the woodwork to support us and be a part of this community. No, it was friends and it was family who came up just to support us and mainly because we had been supporting them. Don't be afraid to start small. There are videos that get a small amount of views. There are albums that get a small amount of streams and there are events that have a small amount of attendees, but there's no such thing as a small creator. Don't let your worth as a creative or as a person be measured quantitatively, but let it be measured qualitatively. So start small, just take that first step. Kate even asked me if I wanted to go work out while we were here on vacation. I said, why on earth would I want to work out during vacation? And here I am climbing like eight flights of stairs. There's an elevator this whole time. So the third and final, and honestly maybe most important tip, is never lose sight of your why. Never lose sight of why you started what it is that you started. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. All right, guys, so I'm literally in the middle of a parking lot in Dallas about to head to another meeting, but I want to take a quick second and interrupt because I'm so sorry about the audio in this vlog. There's a lot that I had to cut out of what it is that I'm trying to say here, and so I feel like there are big chunks missing because I'm walking through these big windy patches of the city, just not thinking about how that would affect the audio. And I loved the shots so much, I didn't want to delete them, so I used what I could, but I wanted to say two things real quick. First off, that quote that I used earlier about how there are no small creators is actually something something that I heard on a vlog that I'm a huge fan of, a guy named Cody Warner. That is his kind of mantra, no small creators. I'm gonna put a link to his stuff here in the video description so that you can check him out. Man, I hope that if you're a creative that feels stuck in the city or in the season that you're in right now, this vlog is encouraging you to say, hey, one, even if there's not much going on around me, I'm gonna support what there is because it's important and because it's gonna come back to me. Two, I'm not gonna be afraid to start small. So if I'm not getting what I need from the community, I'm gonna start taking small steps to implement what I think uh, myself and others will need and three be fiercely committed to your why when you start something if it's successful and I hope that it is for you it will be so easy to pivot along the way and sometimes those pivots are good sometimes they're pulling you farther away from the reason that you started this in the get-go and the best litmus test for this the best filter to know am I still on track here is asking yourself does this conflict with the original why the original reason why I started what I started. All right, so after my whole frustrating walk about and talk about in the windy city of San Antonio, um, I tried to go get tacos at Viva Taco Land, which I'd been hearing a lot about, only to find out that they open their bar at noon and they don't open their kitchen till like two or three, because apparently a lot of people just like drinking for two hours in the middle of the day without any food. So I drank for a couple hours in the middle of the day <laughs> without any food, and then I did not get tacos because I refused to order from them because I'm just bitter and I hold grudges but later on that night we found I'm gonna say it we found the best tacos that I have ever had small amendment we found the best tacos that I've ever had without having to worry about whether or not I was going to catch an amoeba on top of that we happened to be surprised by some of our best friends who were also in San Antonio for the weekend so we met up in the middle of the night for some delicious tacos I want to show you guys a little bit of that and we'll see you next week for part two of tacos and tunes on the road
babe, you have to back me up on okay. this. We came last night to get these tacos. I didn't know anything about them, and my mind was blown. These are the tacos we've been looking for, guys. First of all, it's 11.37 <laughs> p.m. Uh, I did not wanna get out of the house. I'm so proud of y'all. I didn't think it was gonna but happen. But Dave, Dave yeah. These are the best tacos. Uh, These might be better than your favorite Iceland tacos, bro. <laughs> we'll see. The ones that we never found. Yeah. If it wasn't legit already, okay. it's in front of a club and a truck that doesn't open until 11 p.m. I'll give you points for that. Not opening <laughs> until 11 p.m. Yeah. gives it like a cool, not cool factor. Yeah. And the truck has a, a pet cat that sleeps inside. The okay, truck. yeah. It's this yellow truck right here. That's She's like, yeah, yeah, they're good. That was a long drive. <laughs> no, those are so good. Perfect combo. The cheese. We just took them out. Avocado. Just straight back. Is that recording? Yeah. I hope I got that. <laughs>